We'll move to the previous month's minutes. Are there any changes to the minutes? I mean, I have one thing, and I don't know if you know this, Ben. So at the bottom of page three, where it's talking about money for renovations at the rec center, says that would come from the recreation in half dollars, but I don't think that's right. Yes. Um, what's the context? It's the paragraph right above number six. That's right up. It says money for renovations at the rec center will come from the recreation in half dollars. But I don't think those dollars can be used for that. What was there? There it is. Yeah, the the it's on the top there. There has to be there has to be it can't be those dollars directly as an update. There has to be new new use or something new. So so it would have to be something else you would use those dollars for or something other other dollars. So I think it just it needs to say money for recreation renovations at the rec center would have to come from. <laughs> or you could make it easier and just say recreation and half dollars cannot be used for renovations at the rec center because they have to be used for new construction. That's the only thing I have. Anything else? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. If not, I. That's going to let you know what is Stephanie wanted to be here tonight. She has some child care issues, so she's wanted to be here. She would be available for questions or anything else if we need to update. So she's just kind of hanging in the background. Okay. She looks great. <laughs> <laughs> so if there's no other amendments, I just need a motion to approve as amended the minutes. I make that motion to approve as amended. Great. I'll second it. All right. All those in favor? Thank you. Do we don't have any public invite to be heard? Just Before we move to old business, I just wanted to recognize that this is Dan's last meeting, at least for now, on the board, since <laughs> he chooses year, to right? re-up. Um, but well, thanks, Dan. <laughs> you were here with I started and uh whether you knew it or not i actually learned a lot from you about how to be an effective board member and how to represent and listen to your community and pay attention to all of the issues and so i really appreciate that thanks all of your service it's been fun it's interesting that people come and go you it's a whole new group compared you know so that's great yeah. and it's i'm really disappointed that only the two you know two people there's an empty seat next mm -hmm. term. That's really, I mean, yeah. the couple of times that I've had to apply, there was like a dozen people. I had to wait in line to get, you know, it was like a, a pecking order, right? Mm -hmm. Really weird. Really weird. Well, you can help us recruit. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll move on to old business recommendations for Fox Meadows Park name. Steve, Stephanie? Yeah, so um, you guys were given a list in your crab packet. Um, where are all the chairs going? There's less of an image. It's the public to be heard. Um, I don't have any formal presentation. The criteria by which the ordinance is written is at the top of the spreadsheet. And um, Steve, are these folks were all at. Meetings or online or any online. Which way? Yeah, online. Yeah, meetings you. online, and I did take um, recommendations that were for the last couple parts that we've received recommendations that didn't get selected because there are still valid suggestions ah, from gotcha. the city. So they so may or is, may not be for this, this part. Yes, a this, part. yes, this is a combination of. I try to keep the ones that were like the ones I took from Nino Gallo. If it was about that farmer, I didn't include them because there's not really any Got it. point to do so. Okay. But no, the ones that were about judgment. people I that were, say, killed in action, that lived in Long Island, that's yeah. still a relevant possible right. choice. Okay. And so I, I added those to the list. Okay. It seemed like a long list because last month 
it sounded like the meetings we had were a smaller group of people. Right. It's like, wow, that's a lot of folks. Well, that's all three. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. we, did, we did put it out on the um, on the uh, city website, and through Stephanie's work with our communications team, uh, we did a little like nudging, and so we got a bunch. Gotcha. Okay. Well, and certainly certain groups of people are probably telling their friends, hey, we want to get this one or that one. Or, you know. I had one person said I should go and personally poll the whole neighborhood, which I wasn't. <laughs> Can you clarify what do you want a unanimous recommendation from the board? or? Um, what, I would what say we're, we're looking for a recommendation to take the council when we take the master plan of council. Stephanie, I think we're looking at mid-January, right? It's tentatively scheduled for that. So not a choice of three, but one name that they can... That would be, that would be preferred. Gotcha. Um, council really wants to spend as little time on this as possible, I'm <laughs> sure. So uh, if they can just take a name, that's great. If you can't reach resolution, we'd have to take a couple. We can do that, and the council can choose. I personally would throw out Fox Meadows Park because I think it's it's been the working name. I think there was enough support for it. You know, I I like the recommendations for you know sort of a nod to the indigenous history, but I it doesn't feel like there's been a real like that this design of this park or anything has been particularly involving indigenous folks or based on that history. So it would feel a little weird to. Before you have that discussion, can I just bring this up to you? Um, a woman at the third meeting brought it up to me who lives there that the name of the neighborhood is Fox Meadow, not Fox Meadows. Yeah. Now, I don't know what their sign says, and actually, we can probably pull it up on Google Earth and look, <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> The development plans that we went through said Fox Meadows. So it's Fox Meadows in my mind, in the city's mind, what's the party to call it? But it might be Fox Meadow, the name of the neighborhood, one of the moment signs. Just putting that out there for you. Thank you. It's an awful name for a park. Fox Meadow Park is not a good name. Yeah. <laughs> so. Anyone have any other strong feelings that we need to throw out? I agree with you. I think Jim Wall is the largest number on here. Yeah. This person I don't know. And I don't know. I mean, he's a pickleball player and affiliated with hygiene. So if we had a park in the northwest part of town that had pickleball courts, I'd be much more gung ho. But I am I'm I also agree that Fox Meadow quote S <laughs> would be better. I mean it makes more sense. Originally when we talked about this two years ago. I had a couple of different neighbors over there said they really wanted Future Park because the sign's been there for 20 years. Yeah. But one of those people moved away, so I don't know if they really care anymore. I live a block further from, oh. from it all, and every time I'm at that, I'm forgetting the name now, but this, the t two smaller parks and then Stephen Day Park will all be talking about, oh, when, what's going to happen there? And it's either Future Park or Fox Meadows. Right, right. So, so I, for colloquialism. I, the only thing I can say, I like foxes in there, but if it's named after the HOA, sometimes it feels like then if you're not in that neighborhood, you can't use that park because you don't know whether it's an HOA park or not. Mm -hmm. So you don't know whether it's a city park or it's not. So, um, so I like, I really like Fox Hollow, Fox Tail. Like I like the, the, the acknowledgement to that, but just... To the point where it's just enough difference so that you think that it's not a private park by the HOA. Because I, you know, as a as a mom, I would look and be like, oh, is that an HOA? You know, I like different parks we find and things like that. Like, are we allowed to play here? Are we not allowed to play here? Um, so it's the only thing. I like Fox Hollow a lot. I like Foxtail. I liked Earthrun. Other thoughts? I'll throw my idea. So I really like the idea of celebrating a impactful person in our community. Uh, I'm using one of the names that were called out. Uh, I was really drawn to uh, probably Rams here from 
former Mayor Leona Stoker. Pardon? Stacker. Stacker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That that seems like you know reading the history there. I just want to celebrate. Uh, obviously, this Jim Walters house that that is, but um, a lot of engagement on that it seems as well. Um, so that's kind of what I lean towards. The Fox Meadow piece, I, I think I agree with Aaron too. Where it's like, is it part of the development? Like I would not know necessarily if I'm allowed to go there. So that doesn't really help. It's also it doesn't really it's descriptive, but it doesn't really do much for me. If there's an opportunity to celebrate someone or in our leader or community, we should take that opportunity. Thoughts. My other one was that somebody said it looked like a hollow that it designed. It does say so when you name something according to what the design kind of looks like, that's what kind of it ends up being. Um, you know, nobody calls it lefty and park. You know what I mean? Like nobody calls Canamoto Canamoto really in the neighborhood. They're like Pagoda Park or whatever. You know what I mean? So is it the theme you guys decided was the nature play theme, right? Correct. Yeah. That was the, the that was so the name was of like, the concept. Yes. Yeah. So that like, so Fox definitely you know goes with it. Well, it's only hollow because it's a retention spot right now. It has been. For yeah. A but it's going to remain. Right for the most part, yes. Yeah. Right. You guys, Scott. Yeah. Huge. Uh, I, the only concern I have is that they all sound the same over there. Like there's box million things. So yeah. that's the only concern I have is like it's hard to get the north side of exactly this quail crossing. Right, yeah, exactly. The thing. So so we have the fox and quail. Quail. <laughs> so and then Wolf Creek is just to the west of that. Okay. Yeah. So it'd be nice to differentiate there. But I don't know if I actually want to talk. Yeah. I just adding that again, just that unique view that I live there and uh, all the people I talk to about it, whenever we were, we were sitting there just making fun of our kids and then trying to do something else, it, it always ends up as, oh yeah, what are, what's happening with that future park thing? What's going to happen with that Fox Meadows park thing? So, uh, that, just again, just to hammer in, that that's the colloquialism there. Everyone's already kind of named it. It's kind of like a trying to figure out what your kids are going to call your parents, you know? <laughs> your kids already named them. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter what you say, so, yeah, I don't know. That's an interesting thought. So calling it Fox Hollow, while I like it, mm. almost is like a slap to, wait a minute, don't they know this is Fox Meadow? Yeah. You know, if I live there, I, I, I might have that reaction. That was yeah. like, <clears throat> what are they thinking? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, yeah. I'd say I totally hear you on people. And I felt that way in the past, but then, like, sort of after discussion, it becomes really complex, I feel like, and, like, prioritizing what people, and is that person, because we've had this discussion in the past parts, like, mm -hmm. is that person really relevant to that neighborhood? Does it mean anything to them? Is it, the, you know, and I, and you I know, think guy also, will fit right in. That was a yeah. really easy and even that call. Was, but that was even a lot of discussion. There was, so, yes. And just in general, I find that um, a lot of organizations are moving away from just kind of naming after people. Just, just in case we issues. find out two generations yes. from yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> they, no, I don't know any of the people on here. Right, so yeah, right. Me. Yeah. I would love to see Leona's Twitter account. I've been there for 25 years. That would be awesome. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm a real strong opinion. I do think simpler is best, and it is simplest to keep it named similar to the neighborhood rather than trying to invent something new that doesn't have a connection. I think the future park idea is kind of cute and interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, um, if they've gone with the astronaut theme, I would totally do it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I missed that discussion. That would have been yeah. a slam dunk. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, All right, well, and that's why they considered that <laughs> option because of the name, right? Yeah. Yes. I think Fox Meadows, though, yeah. and plural. Yeah. Meadows. Well, well okay, but what about, <laughs> what about Fox Den? Fox Den because that fun. makes it seem like it's kind of clubby. Fox what? Fox Den. Somebody put it in there, the Fox Den Park. Because I worry that if it's not Fox Meadows, yeah, it's yeah. like the people, yeah. the, the residents yeah, will say, they're they're wrong. Yeah, we did yeah, it yeah. wrong. Well, except for the, the problem is, is that then they own the park. If they, like, does that make sense? Like, you know, I don't know. I really like that whole, like, 
making sure that other people feel welcome to use that park. So this is like the country club, are there that many HOA parks and things you can't do? Yeah, there's a lot of HOA parks. Well, in Southwest, that are that big? Are they? Yeah, so every every neighborhood, every neighborhood that's been developed since the mid '90s has some sort of common open space in it that has play equipment, things like that. Those things typically have um, access easement over them. It's not necessarily clear whether or not those access easements extend beyond residents. They're really meant for residents. Like if I went and broke my arm, I'd probably be suing the HOA, and um, they don't want that, so they have the right to kick you off. But this will be a public park. The one thing I can say to your concerns, Aaron, and they're good concerns, but um, is we would have a, a park sign that says the city park with the city branding and the city logo yeah, and that sort of well, stuff. And throughout the site, all the signage yeah. would, would be yes. done to pull it in. So th there is that, but I, but I understand yeah. your concerns. That would help, yeah. And maybe you do make a real point not to use the font that the neighborhood park is in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a good idea. The city's yeah. kind of standardized. Yeah. You know, I'm picturing... Yeah, yeah I, don't, that, I don't get to choose font. The font is with the fonts when selected. It's the city logo font. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's no change in that. Is, yeah, that one right there. Uh, does anyone want to make a, a motion? I move that we name this new, or we recommend to City Council, uh, the Parks and Rec Advisory Board recommends to City Council <laughs> that we name this new park at whatever address it is, uh, Fox Meadows Park. I'd like to second. All those in favor? I'll get behind it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Boom. There we go. Easy work. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw in the chat. Stephanie did confirm that we're going to council on uh, January 22nd. Sure. Oh, yeah. I feel like a former mayor is a pretty good Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I like mayors. Do we have any city that's yeah, like, you can, can you have city employees be names? Like, we don't have anything out. We don't have anything against it. I'm sure she would like to pick her Who, Leona? Yeah. She's a really interesting woman. She used to be mayor a long time. She used to take him up to the master plan as a council. Is that what she's doing? She and Bernie are kind of. Yeah. The master plan, that's part of the package you're presenting those at. Royalty of Longmont from 20 years ago. All right. Let's move back to order. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to new business, uh, the potential open space acquisition. Yep. Um, I just wanted to. Up the right. Well, maybe I'll just wait. Maybe they are. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
think we went too far down the road with negotiating, you know, which is uh, negotiating is negotiating it can, and yeah. it, it's risky and we were doing a partnership with Boulder County and it was, it was a little bit complicated and we were trying to cut out some acreage and you know, do all of these things at once. And so since that time, um, the minerals have been retained by the family, the water has been sold to other buyers, so now it's just the land. And so we, you know, we don't want to let this opportunity slip away again. There actually is another interested buyer. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to follow up because my two questions were about the minerals and the water. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it sounds like there's active oil and gas development on the property. And so you said that still will be owned by the. Yeah, that will continue to be. The minerals will continue to be owned. Um, and the oil and gas company there that is has an active oil and Yes, well pad there is 1876 from the Lake Cub Creek. So yes, that will be. Um, On your map in the packet, there's a little outline, but there's also hash marks through it. I can't yeah. tell, is it included or not included? Yeah, it's or? two parcels. So I'm just, uh, I'm just delineating the two parcels and we, we are looking to buy the entire the entire acreage there. But this the sits on that, so you'll, so how does that work? That they rent to the city or lease That's from correct. the city? They lease it out from the mineral owners. From the mineral owners, so the city's not involved. That's really weird. We own the land, we would own the land, but they get to the use it rights. anyway. Yeah, how does so that we, work? So we would That's own the surface. Yeah. The, the Olander family retained the minerals. And then the oil and gas company comes in and loses the right to access the minerals. So they pay a rent for the surface, right? For the fact that they have a bunch of stuff on the surface. They just uh, pay uh, so no, they have any the options. It's probably Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. There's, there's, no, no, there's no revenue to the city from the lease, is what you're asking. And they get to use it because they get to drill on it. Yeah. So why bother to buy that hunk of property? Well, because at some point that will that will be over, ah. and um, so we we want to own the surface. We want to own the entire parcel. We want to shore up that. Entire okay. Yeah. Corner. No. I get, okay. Thanks. That explains it. Someday they'll leave, and then you get it back. In the meantime, you you're stuck with them there. Correct. Okay. So just to continue with the question, so you don't have, it's, what is the potential for additional oil and gas development beyond that? site and then also what are you thinking around the water so to go to the water piece first we we want to we want to take advantage of this opportunity with the land and so we want to close on this deal and then see what we can do about getting water back on the property there used to be water on the property so some of the research we've done um, as part of looking at buying this land at this time is to look to see if the lateral ditches are still functioning, the ditches that would carry the water to the property since there hasn't been water on it in a little bit of time. And all of those are intact and ready to carry water. So what we'd like to do is close on the land and then have conversations about how we can get water on the property. Mm -hmm. And it's currently being farmed right now as is, is that correct? It's currently being farmed as is, and the sooner we can get water back on the property, the better shape it will be, and the longer water stays off, the harder it becomes for people who want to farm using water, just getting it back in shape. So um, that's a goal, but it, it would be a separate conversation started after we purchased the land, because the landscape has changed. We haven't got the, you know, the ability to buy the water with the land at this time. And Danielle has a couple of different paths we go down as far as far as looking at water too. Right. Um, we've I've I've initially spoken to Boulder County, um, and so I'd like to take up that conversation after this deal could go through, and then as well speaking internally to our own water resources department um, to see what what are the possibilities for getting water back on the land. And then you asked. Another question. That was so if there's potential for expanded oil and gas development. I mean, I can't 
can't say, but I don't think so. All the wells are in that pad is developed. Um, and there is an existing surface use agreement. There is an existing surface use agreement, um, and that is something also that we are going to continue to negotiate after we would buy the land. Um, we have Jane Turner, our oil and gas specialist at the city, who has a relationship with 1876 and a contact there and is speaking with them about um, negotiating some points on the surface use agreement to get it to be up to the standard that the city likes to see and they're open to that um, so those conversations would occur after we purchase the land but have been started so. I think one thing that's made us feel better about this is the fact that with the spacing units and where that's at right now, it'd be hard to, as you start looking where development's at and all the setbacks and stuff like that, it makes it hard to figure out where they, they could go with some of those additional pieces if the surface use agreement didn't meet our full criteria. But again, I think with that, with that surface use agreement in place and our ability to try to make it a little bit stronger, I think we feel comfortable closing at this point and then continue negotiating that surface agreement. Yeah, we feel... You know, it's not perfect, but it's adequate. And the fact that the conversation is open to be had, to be continued, is a good thing. And the fact that the oil and gas wells are already there existing and producing, and it's our, you know, we'd be in a different spot if this were a surface use agreement and the oil and gas pads weren't there and we didn't know where they were going to put roads and everything, but it's already done. It's already. So it's pretty minimally intrusive mm -hmm. as well. Just the gas. Right there. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> And there are concerns of other mineral rights, like you know, aggregates or anything like that. that was already talked about. Nothing, nothing else is in the title work okay. other than, you know, we've reviewed all the, the title work and we're comfortable with everything else that comes in. Is that the old Olander farm that's on the east middle yeah. spot that's not Historically, included? Historically, this belonged to the Olander farm. The, right. the so that the is the Olander farm. There's a piece here and then this yeah, piece there. Yeah, those are, correct. Those are cutouts. Those are house lots, yeah. Who owns this piece of here? Can you pack it? <laughs> that is already, um, the, the green is already. No, it's the white. It's the white. white. It's white. The dairy. Oh. So chef. That's the goat chef. Yeah, that's that's a, that's actually oh. one of our existing agricultural tenants that uses this rock of land. I'm sure it's one of the pieces of the city as we talk about open space in the future and all those pieces of when are you done? There's always those pieces out there. Um, goat chefs right now have at least another generation of farmers in their family, so I you know, I think we're always willing to work with them if we do conservation easements. If at some point we want to give it up, those are the pieces that at this point is there anything else that if we don't have a willing seller, but um, I think we're going to be ready if those opportunities present themselves. So what did that about? last block. I know. I know. <laughs> the, yeah. Yes. Yeah. You're not the only person who has noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I wonder about the But uh, the Dochef have right. seen, like, good stewards at least, you know, so that's cool. Yeah, they've been good tenants and they... Mm -hmm. That was my, I think, from my ask was, um, is there anything else nearby that would contribute to the reservoir or kind of transport, like a trail and master planning kind of process? As I recall, that's all taken care of. Have you owned enough property to get that done? Yes, that's not necessarily needed okay. to be able to do that project. The question I had was, you mentioned the potential of pursuing conservation easement with the county. Um, are other properties in this area also under easement, or they're just they are just in fee? Okay. Are all of them? I mean, you should assume they are. And that was just ownership, I think. Some of them are, um, yes, they are for different purposes. A lot of them are under conservation easement for reservoir expansion in the future. Um, so, this would be a conservation right. easement to protect the open space and the agricultural values <coughs> of the open space. So, that's what I mean. And when you buy and work with the county on that, is there usually a fee exchange for that? But do they pay for the easement? Well, I mean, we, we don't have a conversation about it because we're talking about other things. We're talking about the water, but right. often yes. But. Uh, so we, we do reciprocal board. conservation easements too. Well, we've held them for them. They hold, hold them for us as well. So, and we did have direction from formal councils that they really didn't want to see us having conservation easements on the open space properties we purchase. Okay. It's best practice. Yes. What I was going to say is that I'm not sure the map that you're seeing, but 
the city owns a lot of land around Union Reservoir that's not open space. We own it as water properties, mm -hmm. and so those properties don't have necessarily the same yeah, it's, it's protections. It's just open space. Oh, and just, you don't know if there's an easement or not, unless you do a title search. Yeah, so like, well, even looking yeah. at that, that's not all. Some of those are water. Some of those are water properties. That's a they have right adjacent. Small O, small S. Yeah, the purpose of this map is just open to space, show you the, yes. yeah. the hole in the puzzle. Yeah. It's interesting yeah, that Boulder County wants to be involved, and this is clearly in Willow County. I think this Boulder County makes sense. You know, it's it's interesting. At, yeah. <laughs> if you look at Boulder County, they have purchased properties in Jefferson County, Larimer County, Willow County. And a lot of times it's a partnership because of, if it's a if it's riparian corridors, if it's agricultural lands, those things don't really follow right. You know, geographical political boundaries, so they're willing to participate in these that complete these sort of larger ecosystem or agricultural pieces as far as partnerships. Um, how much of the like available funding that is available for purchase does this use up? So is the so I did break down the funding in my so yeah. How much of the available funding? So it's 3.0 3, 3. million for the space fund. How much is in this fund? Um, I guess that'll use up the is that one point one million royalties will be filled up again as well. Is that one point one million royalties? Is that like about how much you get in a year? Is that five years worth of royalties? Oh gosh, or? I don't know. Okay. And um it fluctuates and I'm not the person to yeah. ask that No, nope, because for me the only doubts that I'm seeing is that like this removes the chance to buy a different property that might be even more important to the city if you can avail like the Doe Chef area. Not that that's gonna happen. But this would limit the ability to be reactive for a couple of years, it sounds like. By drawing down that fund. You know, we had we had money coming back to us from the Adam Farm sale in 2022, mm -hmm. which is allowing us to have the funding to buy this. So mm -hmm. I would say it's fortuitous that we're in this position to mm -hmm. put together this amount of funding in a short amount of time. I mean, we started this deal in late September, and we yeah, yeah. And so I think it's um, I think, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I was going to say the piece on this that prior I've been here now. Going on my eighth year. This is a property, I think, you know, too, that you know, previous mayors and councils have all been, you know, wanting to acquire this property. Maybe that's just me being a little bit apprehensive now because we were negotiating and we lost. It just feels like that one last bite of the apple. So I think that's the piece. You start with these city priorities prior to David or Dan Danielle sitting here. This has been a city council kind of desire for, you know, quite a while. And I would also say that. Um Opportunities like this are scarcer and scarcer. I mean, the city limits, and the city is what it is, and so um, this is this is an opportunity that we would really like to take advantage. Yeah, I think the reason I'm commenting is that for a couple reasons. One, I don't know as well what else is out there, not on the shopping list, but what might be available, or you thought might be available, or could be out there. I have no idea of the pricing or the sizing. Like, it's just to use up a lot of the money for one thing is hard. And second, it doesn't really provide any parks or recreation benefit as an open space property, where I believe there are other properties like to the north of the city that are in the long-term planning of trails and access to parks or access to water. This doesn't really provide any additional access to the public, which is by design. It's a conservation property and it's or intended to be that way in the agricultural use. But I think purely from the Pratt perspective, that's a few, a few comments, I guess is that it, it would certainly be a benefit to the city for all the reasons you listed and the, and the residents, but it's not a parks and rec priority and there might be other parcels I don't know about that could be contributing to that. That's why I asked about the trail, for example. Well, in terms of the yeah. timing of it, there's nothing competing with right. it at this, yeah. at this time. I'll throw on a piece out there for you. If that property that's, again, I can't think of a higher priority that I've heard about from the city since I've been here. If something else to come up like, like the Dochet Dairy is one of the things that really is nice with Danielle's relationship with the county. We've done stuff in the past where we can be creative with the county and we've they've fronted us some dollars on doing projects knowing that we have revenue coming in. So partnerships is things we can look at, grants are things we can look at. Mm -hmm. um, we've bought properties over time. Over time so <clears throat> there's creative ways that we can try to 
where, where it's going to yeah. come up all okay. of a sudden That's like good. that. Yeah. yeah, it's good to hear that we retain the agility you want yeah. to be able to make other choices because things come up all the time until you know, next week, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's totally right. Is this the one? This is the one that we went by, like on on our field trip. We went by this. I can stop there. I'm pretty sure. Um, no, it was further to the east because uh, you had a view of St. I mean, Grand this Park. is like here before last, yeah. Right. Uh, I don't know for sure. I guess. I feel like it was, but. Uh, okay. But I don't know. There's like a hill there, <laughs> and a fence, <laughs> and a hill. So, Let's go back to that. I, I just like to again for this group again. You know, we have parks and recognize a group, but we really do come with that open space piece and that open space mm -hmm. sort of spectrum of things that are really to make community buffers and providers, the agricultural piece, the scenic views. There's lots of pieces in there that really aren't that recreation piece. It was wildlife corridor, which just you know has some edge effect too, but it really I think historically been more that community separator. And just so you know, one of the reasons this came to us and went so fast is. This was really me calling us because there's a developer calling me to say, can we get permits to build houses? Mm -hmm. They were going to build it. So again, for Longmont, having that sort of driving into our community, you know, with that McMansion sort of look along there, I think was a piece for the community that is outside of the parks and rent, but I think we look at you as our open space advisory group as too, even if it's not in your title. Mm -hmm. So just name that. I move that uh, PRAB recommend to City Council that we buy this property. I want to second that. All those in favor? Hear me struggle to sound yeah. official. I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, I'll see you. Like, I'm like, really bad. Uh, 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 that's my That's pretty yeah, and, you know, I was going to ask that. Too. <laughs> Which is well, without the right mineral exactly. water, especially. Yeah. That's one of the things that I'd like to go. I come back to these boards we talk about it sometimes. They'll ask how to get an appraisal. Yeah. It's one of those hard things. You start looking at comps and stuff. You look at these assemblage pieces. Yeah. There's really nothing else you can compare. We can buy another 150 acres out in well counters, but it doesn't do what Clint does. So I think people know that assemblage piece has a value to it. Mm -hmm. One, my other piece sitting here, having wash pieces go away in 10 years when there's houses there, people don't really care that you had spent an extra, you know, X number of dollars and say, why didn't you buy this when you had a chance? Yes. I mean, yeah, like even just wildlife alone and bird corridors and yeah. Okay, so our next item, when we planned for this meeting, I asked um, Jeff and David and then Jeff passed it off to Ben, <laughs> to um, just kind of share some reflections about the past year, and since we're kind of at the end of the calendar year, I thought it'd be great to just be able to hear from them, you know, what they, what felt good to them, you know, what were successes, maybe some challenges, and then, you know, thought maybe we as board members could take a little bit of time to share the same. So I don't know which of you wants you to... Mean, I'll start, because I'm going to push back on page a little bit, because... Um, I really do ask staff to put together sort of end of year reports, what kind of their accomplishments and achievements were. But a lot of times um, that requires getting data in from the end of the year and pulling that together. So they have a little bit further out deadline. So they'll be coming probably the, the February meeting because they'll you know, won't have time to get done in January, but they'll pull together all the data. So I'd like to just kind of get that higher level piece of what I thought what one well, I think this group probably more than anyone. I recognize what I'm saying. I think it really is councils and our leadership team to get additional staff to do our parks and trail development. You know, Stephanie and the team that she's brought up. So having Stephanie come on as a manager, having two new people come on in that term position to help out Steve and then the person that backfilled for Stephanie. That's pretty impressive to happen in one year, um, which then goes back into kind of something we're hoping for coming up with the eight and five. So having that position in the, the Parks and Trail Design Group. Uh, Danielle, the open space piece. I think, you know, again, you can go back to having Dan here, and Dan had a lot to do. And for Danielle to really start focusing on the open space piece um, is a huge benefit. And then she oversees the volunteer group and can oversee the person that's using places. So that capacity has been great. That also put the position in Jim Kirk's piece, which was the ecosystem manager. So 
Um, Danielle can look at open space management plans, and then Jim can come implement it. So you're not having one person that is always down the rabbit hole trying to do the strategic plan, but also then the tactical pieces how you're doing. So it, I think it gives us a lot better look at how we look at opportunities, look at budgeting, look at future management of open space properties. Um, other thing that's maybe not as much of an accomplishment as a, at least a starting piece, because that's also for your time for me. So we were looking at starting strategic planning for the um, for this Park and Natural Resources Group. And again, have a great team to do that, which really gives us a great opportunity to look what we're going to be doing in the future. Another piece, I went down a little bit of rabbit hole, but I just don't think enough people understand it. And you'll see it when staff shows up to talk about their groups. But our forest management at Button Rock has just been super impressive. We have got significant amounts of grants from the state, county, and federal level to really protect our watershed up around Button Rock. And we've done an amazing job doing that. We just got to notice today we've got some more grants coming up this coming year. So we've got an additional, I think right now we're over $300,000 we've already got put towards forest management up there. And then for me, that again, that ability for us to have that capacity to respond to more of the public needs sooner this past, this past year that we've been able to take on projects that we would have had to just say no to because we did not have the capacity. So for me, that's it. it really was that capacity. I mean, that's what it is, that capacity building piece that, that really took, I think, people like you that recognize it, councils and others to really give us that ability. Um, and then goals for next year aspiration, having that capacity would really be um, the completion, start to see this come online with the eight and five projects, which we're going to see, you know, several new parks open up next year, which I think is super exciting. Um, having a new senior ranger out on our greenways, which will allow, again, more capacity at Button Rock and, and Union. Um, we'll have a new park supervisor, which will be able to help us do that maintenance and ongoing work within our parks. Um, I've also been asking the group to start talking about the question we get all the time is, what does it, it cost to manage open space? What does it cost that long-term piece? How much money do you need? If you stop buying, what does it cost to manage you know, your park? So um, I think we've done in the past that we've had dollars and we spread those across the acreage. What we're looking at now is, what does it really cost to manage a park that has a rose garden in it versus a park that has a playground in it? What does it cost to manage a open space that had a formal oil and gas well on it and you have to do restoration work? versus one that was agriculture and a tenant's going to manage it. So I've been really pushing staff to start coming with that, and it's been a pretty exciting piece that we'll start seeing next year, too. Um, equity inclusion, I think the piece that we start looking at strategic plan building into that, um, that goes back, you know, here again, I don't want to steal the thunder, but like the kids in nature and the forum partnerships we're doing is exciting. Sustainability really being built, built into all, all of our master plans and all the, the things we're working on. For me personally, and I think Danielle sitting next to me, is the, the increased opportunity for volunteer capacity within our organization is something that I'm really looking forward to. And then, even though these little pieces where it may not be a trail, you know, right through something or giving the, the scenic vistas, but we have a lot of our companies come for regional trails and using the open space program to help facilitate some of those um, regional trail opportunities, which I think may be a huge benefit for our community overall. Does that work for you at a high level? Perfect. Yes. Thank you. There's a lot there, and there's a lot of great people going to be doing a lot of great work for you guys. So I'm super excited about it. Yeah, no, that's exactly what I was hoping for. Do you have your separate? Data. No, in February, we'll come back with staff, and they'll all do if you don't mind. Yeah. That's what we'd like to do. Is that yeah. right? That's perfect. Ben? Yeah, so um, Jeff gave this to me because it's actually. <laughs> it's just fun. It's all folks that work for me. Um, 2023 was a very challenging year in recreation, so all of our accomplishments are related to challenges, really, that we've had. Um, you, know, you know, I had one down, and then when David talked about staffing, getting staffed this year was a, was a huge challenge, and we became fully staffed. Um, we have somebody resigning right now, so we're going to lose one, but... That's the nature of the business, but we were, to start the year, probably needing you know, six or seven staff at various times, a full-time variety, plus trying to get fully staffed and temp staff post-COVID, which has been such a challenge, as you guys well know. And we're there. You know, we got there in the summer, late in the summer, fall, 
Um, we did a reorg related to that. Uh, we did a reorg within internally within aquatics that put a focus on the maintenance side, so kind of building up the maintenance side to allow the programmers to really focus on programming and not be quite so um, universal, which I think will, has allowed them to really focus on programming and has allowed now two maintenance folks instead of one with the same amount of money. We made it happen, we just split the pie a little bit differently. Also looking towards the future, at some point we'll have another facility. So <laughs> having another maintenance person we know will be helpful. So that's, it's really a cool one this year that I, I, we're all very proud of. Um, and within the memorial building with my adjustment and duties, we kind of made a couple of changes there with staff that really kind of helped again. Just focus letting people do what they're really good at and will hopefully allow us to set us up for, for success in the future in the programming area. Um, straight up accomplishments, getting the pools open this summer, the two activity pools. We gotta give it to our aquatic staff. They spent, I'm sure we can count them, so they're not countless, but it's a lot of hours. Um, Roosevelt hadn't been open in three years, almost four the way, the way that happened. And to start up a pool that has been dry like that was really something, and they got it done. And other than uh, the backflow inspector forgot forgetting to close the valve like a day before we were opening and losing half the water, <laughs> um, it, we were ready to go on time. That's it was pretty pretty awesome. I thought um, we got rhythm on the river, moved to rhythm at Roosevelt. Uh, that was a, a big change for us. Very satisfied with the outcome. The, the feedback from the public was great on the event. Um, it was a lot of fun. It was a great day. The feedback from staff and, and realize that event is not just recreation. We, we head it up, but that's a lot of different groups helping. And the whole organization really loved the way it was set up. It wasn't as much of a burden to some of them, um, and that's a good thing. You know, it's jobs can be tough and. Even with our folks splitting the day, instead of having you know two, well, a twelve-hour day and an eight-hour day, having one ten-hour day split into two was everybody on our staff. Who I got there halfway through, and well, was there, but I got there halfway through for my shift, and to a person, every one of them said, "Do you need me to stay? This, you know, do you want me to stay?" Because they were having a good time. So it was it was really cool and. No concerns with the neighborhood. Parking ended up being great. It's a great event, and we look forward to the future with it. Um, another uh, another accomplishment for sure: getting the feasibility study done and prepared. Um, related to that, we certainly want to thank council and everybody here involved for helping to get us on the ballot. Now we were successful, but I think we learned some things. Um, we'll be. Jumping back into that, that's a challenge for the future that you know, we'll, we're already looking into what the next step will be and being ready when that comes around. So um, it was a big deal to get the study done. Um, I hope we're able to utilize that information when it comes around again with maybe a little bit of update. Um, didn't win, but that's okay. We'll be back again. Uh, we've got a new therapeutic recreation coordinator started. That was a huge deal for us. Um, something I and Michelle Wade at Senior Services fought for for a couple of years, and it was the first time recreation since well, since Jeff has been there, even before, well before me, that we were ever given a position in, the, in this case, half of a position without having the supporting revenues. So that meant a lot to us to to get that because it's so important to the community. The programming for special needs is so important and something. We just couldn't get far enough into because we just couldn't connect the staff. We ought to have somebody who, this is what our job is, she loves it, she's a professional in that. Um, really exciting, and she's doing some great work and we're already growing, so very fun. Um, talked about the reorganization. Um, and we will top four million this year. So that was a, that was a bit of a, I don't wanna say stretch goal, Jeff was very dubious about it for a long time, and I kept telling him, no, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. We're gonna end up about 300,000 over budget for revenues. Expenses are another story for another day. Um, 
something that we we're struggling with because staff costs have gone through the roof as they have everywhere. Yeah. But revenues are, have been on the move and we're doing well, and that's a good thing. So, um, looking forward, uh, we're working on master plan right now, uh, programming master plan. So we'll be back with you guys uh, in February. Well, between January and March, giving you some updates where we're at with that. Looking for some feedback. So uh, that's exciting. Getting into next year. And I can tell you that we've got a really excited staff uh, going forward, really good group that um, now that we've got our really experienced folks, we've got a, a lot of fresh, fresh new younger people that have new outlook, come from different experiences, excited for the future. So there you go. And I can keep talking for another hour. But. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you guys. I really do appreciate you taking time to put that information together. Is anyone from the board have anything, any reflections on things that felt like accomplishments from the year? I took a few notes as I was thinking about that, <clears throat> as I listened carefully, of course. Um, I, well, I had to look back, this is the end of my first year. I probably like started in January. I couldn't remember when it was because it feels like it's been a long time. But um, I was thinking, you just I've learned so much about how much time and energy it takes to get things done in the Parks and Rec area. <laughs> And how much effort that is, but also amazingly how the city gets those things done and start that challenge. I think we have a really good view into that, that I only had 1% of the view of that as just another public, and so this is a chance to appreciate that and share that with my, um, my friends and, and neighborhood acquaintances. Um, I, both of you guys mentioned the increase in staff support. I think it's really noticeable in the meetings we've had this year, just going from you know you covering everything to having a working cast of people cover everything, or Steve would answer every question for a while. And, um, I know that was a big effort, so that's been great. Um, I'm most excited about the trails work coming in the future, um, as well as just hearing, I think, some of the plans the city has for future areas of investment that may be 25 years away, but you know are out there. I also didn't really understand that and appreciate the thought that goes into it. I'm especially excited about the both East and West Greenway extensions um, and the double, I think the double access to St. Brandon State Park from Union too is like a really unique thing for that part of the city. And I just think the breadth of access, the Greenway is already amazing, and it's like doubly amazing to think of it being longer. Um, I think it's a unique thing that I knew about not living here, but when I moved here, it was part of that draw. I also want to say the last thing was, I think two more things. One, I think, I feel like the city has really good like, instincts and responsiveness to unexpected things. Like the open space is a good example, right? Like acting quickly on that. But even the YMCA proposal, right? Out of left field, totally challenging, random new thing that, was kind of dumped on on you that the response to those things seems to always be very genuine and very intentional and in my opinion the right kind of response and so i appreciate that you know the response is not well that sounds complicated we don't we have enough going on we can't deal with that it's like let's mobilize people and make it happen which is not how every municipality reacts to those things and last thing i just got the for ben the, the rec booklet that comes in the mail and, and through the entire thing when i was having coffee the other day and it just Amazing the breadth of offerings of type of things that are in the rec program for every different resident in the city. For me, with little kids, for my mom was visiting as an outside you know visitor for um, exercise things, and just there's so much more than where you go into there, and just keep finding more things. And that's like a lot of effort for sometimes only one class. That's one day in there. It takes time to do that, but it's it, it would be easy to do a simpler version of that, and it's really impressive. So I really appreciate that. Thank you for saying. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Thank yeah. You. We get excited about it as I see here. Thank you. Just a really short, quick note. Um, not necessarily new for 2023, but continue to do it. I think I really like the the style that we have in these meetings and our structure and our ability to have free flow conversations, but yet still have some structure and order where it's not complete chaos all the time. Um, I think we find the right balance there with this open discussion and dialogue where everyone can feel heard, but yet um, we still get things done. We typically end at the right time, which is which is great. I think it really is a testament to, to you, Paige, and your, your uh, <coughs> way you got in meetings, and so thank you. Dan, any further thoughts no. you want to share? No. <laughs> about this the last too. couple of days. No, guys, it's a new thing. I'm, I'm gone. <laughs>
<laughs> pretend I was never here. Uh, Unless uh, a year from now I show up again. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, you can plan for it because my seat will be up. So, right, well, there you you make, go. hopefully, it'll be 16 <laughs> people applying. Right. This is just an odd year. Mm -hmm. yeah. You guys just elbowed them out. Is that what happened? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. sharp elbows. <laughs> Roller derby. So I wanted to add a couple of things just to recognize. Um, one was the button rock management plan. That was so much work. And I think, and hard decision in the end, and hard, I think, to take a stand where you did. But I really appreciate that and admire that. And I think, you know, having gone to button rock recently, like it's, it was just felt so much more peaceful. And, you know, I know not everyone loves that, but I do think it was a good decision and a well thought out decision. Thank you for that. Um, I also was have been uh, super happy to see the increased capacity because you know we've, every year we've been like, okay, why do we just have one or two project managers and the same people? And so just to see the folks that you brought last time, you know, just having you know having Stephanie joining us, and uh, I think it's been really great to have that added capacity and things see things starting to move. Hopefully, at a little bit faster pace. Feels like they're moving. Um, on the recreation side, I do think you guys have done a really good job of digging out after COVID. I mean, that was a hard situation for all involved, but I think particularly for recreation and indoor recreation and getting people back into that. And so I think having the success that you're having and, you know, I think revitalizing your staff and bringing in new energy is, speaks really well and is exciting for the future. And I'm super excited about your partnership with Thorn and where that's going and that sort of kids in nature and the focus on kind of equity and underserved communities. I think it's really great. So thank you. Lots of studs. All right. I was actually not thinking of a yearly compliment, but I was too lazy to write it to write you guys a note, but I had a I just went to Button Rock as well, and you know I go during the summer, and I went on uh, just I went tracking over um, Thanksgiving, and uh, the the new plan is working. Uh, there's a there's a lot more wildlife right now. I I don't know. It just seems like there's a lot more wildlife than there was, and um, and then having a really wonderful interaction with the. Uh, the ranger up there, Daniel, I believe his name is, and just, you know, he's, he's taking pictures, he's enjoying himself, which is also really nice to see a ranger, like, enjoying their work, right? When he was uh, doing his work, but he's taking some pictures and, you know, had no idea, as, you know, on park sport or anything, and had a conversation with him and my brother and um, about, like, the animals there and what, like, what's appearing and how well that the plan is working, and then I let him know, you know, like, but, you know, I talked to him about being on the board and that, with that decision and everything and how it was tough for people. But it was really good. It was a great interaction with them and but not going great. So. So, if you don't mind, I'll just look for a certain wait for maybe price when they present in February. But I think if the board wants to really think about a field trip coming up, that part of Button Rock to see the forestry work up there. Because I just don't think mm -hmm. there's many people in our community who realize what a significant project we're doing up there that I have friends at the national level and the forest are like, how did you do this? Because we're doing cross-boundary projects where mm -hmm. we've ignored property lines and just said the management of the forest is an important piece and it's, it's a pretty impressive project. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, the mountain lion has no idea that there's a city and a county, county boundary. And and that, oh, this is Larimer County. Exactly. And like, yeah. And the fire doesn't care either when it comes to No, huh? Yeah. That's, that's cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone. I just, I feel like at this time of year, it's always good to kind of take a little time to reflect before we dive into the craziness of the next year. So, um, next item is items from the packet. Does anyone have questions on things in the packet? Um, so a few things on, on page 16. So um, so uh, first, uh, Thompson Park, great, live in the neighborhood, love it. Um, the question is, uh, taunting with Thompson Park in July 4th activities. It's already come up about five times in the last week in the neighborhood people can 
Stephanie, you ready for these? Yeah, I couldn't quite hear. Do you have any questions? I'm sorry? I could, oh, I couldn't quite hear what you were saying other than Thompson Park. Yeah, it was uh, Thompson Park and July 4th celebration. People are like, I was so excited to, like, Thompson Park is getting a renewal, but is that going to impact July 4th activities in the park? Mm -hmm. I would um, assume so, since the schedule seems. I, I would guess it would, because that's ideal, you know, construction time. However, the phasing hasn't been determined, um, and it hasn't been awarded. So whenever we get that construction schedule, we'll have more information on that. You know, it's the playground replacements, modifications to some of the pathways, and uh, minor renovations to the restroom with regard to the fixtures and whatnot. So it just depends, you know, which shelter. Maybe it can be phased so that one of the shelters is available and one isn't. Did Jeff phone that question into you? No. no. <laughs> so, he called me immediately. So the first, the first one was somebody from the PTO, like Bradley. She's like, you you do park stuff or neighborhood stuff. What's the deal with talk? I'm like, I, I don't know. But just the day it. after we convinced something to not try to go to Roosevelt and stay at Thompson, we got that call. <laughs> right. So nice. um, we are working with that alternative. Okay. All right. Yeah. 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 At one of the meetings, they discussed closing just mainly the area around there and buffer, which I think would be compatible with slowing the event there, but maybe it's better. Trying it. Not knowing where these guys would be at, we just want to have something that we know they'd be successful. So we're working with it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Something that will be fun. Right. Um, uh, great. Um, in the Dry Creek One path, there's a reference to a CMO, and I didn't know it was, I think it was Longmont Housing Authority, the LHA. It said that there's a conflict between LHA and CMO, and I don't know what CMO stood for. I don't know if there's a special project management term for that, but I'll, uh, Stephanie, but it's. Well, city, the city manager's office. Oh, okay, city manager's office. So it's a question about ownership of a property or future use of the, so that's why we, we can't build a trail. Or is that the concern? It says trail. Is, is, yeah, it says tr I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, it is pause. They're trying to work through some of the challenges with regard to where the trail goes on the property and the future development of the property. And then who's ultimately, I'm sorry, my cat's meowing, who's ultimately mm -hmm. responsible for that trail at that point. And so I know Ariel with our, um, the PM that's running that project is working with Trish on our team and others to kind of work through the challenges um, that have arisen. Okay, great. Um, and then uh, just remind me, I'm sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't remember. On St. Frame 13, is the plan going, still going over or under? Under. Under, okay, mm -hmm. all right. So, yes. someone, someone challenged me that it was going over. And I was like, I don't think this was the plan. So, no, it's okay. under. Okay. Underpass. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Make any, any other questions from the packers? I don't have anything except I did want to say we did bring some refreshments for Dan's last evening. Some fruit and <laughs> left over from what meeting? No. <laughs> uh, Veronica Fresh. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> so wow. Um, Thank you. please feel free as we wrap up. Um, if that inclines, we're not here fine. But I'd personally like to thank you. Thanks. For wow. I, I, I yes. enjoy getting to know you. Mm -hmm. Anything else from staff? I do. I had some homework for you, um, Stephanie, back last time. But before that happens, there was a little confusion that Jen and Bank, my Rangers, were both here thinking they were going to present. They just had one bullet in the, their updates about their rules and rights, the municipal changes they're going to make, and they wanted to get this group's input and give some heads up on that. So we will get them on the agenda for January 8th to kind of talk about the, the changes that we're proposing to make, um, which ties into some of the the stuff that I'll bring up next. So, um, at the last meeting, there's a question about the Hildebrand Trail, which is across the road. And mm -hmm. That is a 
city easement on private property. So we have very limited ability to do much outside of that as far as keeping the trail cleared. I can't remember exactly what the question was on that one. I know the Brant Trail, but it was a question. Did Scott, did you bring that up? Yeah, I guess um, uh, um, someone I know um, talked to her and she said that it was hard to maintain it. She's getting older or whatever. And it was a question of who's allowed to maintain it or whatever. So that's a good, so the maintenance of the trail service itself, we can do, we do have that right. So if, we, if there's things out there, feel free to give me a call and say, or half or give us a call or put a service work request in, but we do maintain that trail. It's, it's a little more challenging for us to get equipment in and out or do stuff on trees alongside of it because it we, we just have that trail easement on okay. private property. And I believe that is in an incorporated board plan, so. Okay. Um, Dan, for your last one, you asked about backboards, is that correct? Mm -hmm. um, when we did the pickleball course, they were like 9,000, they have doubled since then. They're like 18. Pickleball course, what? We did the backboards at the pickleball. I didn't know they had backboards, okay. I, I was thinking of the one at Cars, the only one I know of. Is that where it's at? We the last, the, the one last one we did, park. maybe that's what it was, but the last one we did was like nine, timber check on it, and they're up to 18 now. Yikes, okay, yep. thanks. Per, per court, so 18 per court. Very slab of wood. I know. It, it is kind of crazy. Um, going to that rules and rights piece, this is something that will really will not be in this rules and rights update, but it'll be something we look at more long term. It really is the e bike rules and rights, and it's something that, um, again, I think there's lots of pieces with e bikes that I would say that my personal philosophy has changed on that as far as you know, equity and some of the other pieces, especially talk about. Now trails potentially go from I-25 to lines in the future. Um, how you incorporate those? So we'll be working on that, and it'll be something I hope we'll be incorporating this this group in that conversation too. Court lights for the timers on tennis courts. It may be the daily savings time, but they are on timers, and they go from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. or 10 p.m. But they don't come on. Now, for example, you can you can push the button, but nothing happens until after four thirty. And for yeah, about four thirty p.m., so they won't come on at four twenty or four fifteen. This is for Pratt Park in particular, um, and so it gets pretty dim. You know, the sun goes down at four o eight or something. It goes behind the mountain. So, oh, yeah. So, so that's what it is. I'm sorry. I was reading this. It is. They're supposed to be able to be push the button and come on from 5 p.m. to 5 or, or it's to 10 better than 5 p.m. It is now, it's 4 30 right now, right? So that's, so that's great, that's 4 15 be even better, okay. but and you know, it's a tricky thing. Yeah, I, mean, I understand it almost needs a darkness sensor instead of a timer, but I don't know what's possible, <coughs> you know, like the street right. lights are, right? Yeah, you know, and it does nothing has to happen unless somebody pushes a button, but at least it's enabled when it gets to a certain. Threshold yeah. of darkness. You know? Yeah, I'm sorry, I just understood, but that now I do know that. So it's, it's that gap between when when you push it at 5 p.m. and it'll come on. That's what I'm Correct. told. It's that it's getting dark. It gets dark right. before yeah, 5. Exactly. And right, I'm, yeah. like I say, I don't know. I think at Quail it's also 4 30 right now, yeah. which is almost fine and will be in a month. Right. You know, we're, we're on the downstream <clears throat> exactly. swing and we'll be back up again. Then the sunset weeks. was two days ago. So. Is that what it was? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, maybe it's not worth worrying about, but in the in the future, even better would be a light sensor type enabled. That was, you said those are, the light sensors are hard for some reason. I'm not sure the details on that, but they, it's uh, all on timers. And I, I think yeah. that's something we probably look at. Yeah, it's big and yeah. What's the rest? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we'd have to pay electric bill, but nobody cares if they're on it. It's bright. It's, right. Nobody notices, you know, yeah. but we're paying electricity. Yep. I think it's a great deal. We would press the button. Right. That's true. That's true. I right. Does the quill have a button press one too? Pardon? Does the quill one also button press? Yes. I don't go by there and I, like I swear there's nobody like playing. Well, and there, it's interesting. In quail, you push the button and they go on and they stay on until you push the button again. At every oh, other park, that's you why. have to re-push the button every 15 minutes. Every 15 <laughs> or if you don't, it turns off and there's like a 10 minute regeneration period because of the mercury that's vapor the lights. Oh. So you have to know what not to do or do correctly. <laughs> 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 I 
Wow. Well, I would say no, please play. Playing at 9 p.m. in December, so you're right. moving forward an hour. <laughs> yeah. 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 You play, you know, it gets really cold by like 6, 5.30. I mean, you I'd be impressed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we play. We play today. I mean, it's, that's it's why I see, the light, that's why I see those lights on, though. Because they that, stay at They need to have the turn off at, like, no, 15 minutes is ridiculous. They'll go half hour or something. I mean, it's like my office. Like, I'm like, no, I'm working. Yeah, right, right. I'm it's working. Real. Yeah. Um, so thank you, bro. I'll, we'll clarify that for now. Okay. Um, the next piece was I kind of committed without Daniela Taylor to be happy to do updates on the the Kids in Nature, Nature Everywhere program as we hit kind of milestones of the end. Do you want to well, talk about that commitment? Taylor will be coming in February to give lots of details about everything that's being planned for 2024 and just the details of all those programs. Okay, and that's then, great. Yeah, yeah. I just make sure to uh, remind her to click please involve the board on whether there's an opportunity for the board to provide kind of feedback yeah, on yeah, that, you know, visioning and like what you're thinking about. Absolutely, it. and I, we're at a great time, perfect timing for all of that right now. So, so, so she'll be here at the beginning of the year. She'll be putting more detail in her written um, updates as well. Great. And then the last one was I did it with Adriana, who was the stepdaughter of a former Workman Park, which is now Nino Park, which is actually Nino Gallo Park. So okay. her it's not Gallo? No. Um, she says not okay. a booster. It's it's the closest I could get is, you know, being a plant community or treat the gall is the way she says gallo. So okay. um he's from Argentina. It was a very Italian area, and it was a piece that they had. They kind of struggled with people like wanting to put that either way, but it's Gallo. And she said, when they if they ever name it, she'd like to actually have to put it there to help people with the pronunciation of that. Oh, wow! Yeah. Or a button you can press the. Or a button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, not Gallo, Gallo. Gallo, yeah. So you guys have my full yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. For sure. Oh. And then um, again, those pieces I don't think a lot of people really understand is that our open space program with the agricultural piece, um, there's a lot of stuff on local food, and that's gonna be challenging just because of the way markets are and everything else and pricing and where things grow most efficiently. But um, Boulder County and Longmont now with Montgomery Farm property, which is on um, 66 and Conway Road, that long property that's up there that will be a future park at some point. Um, it's farmed by Dave Asbury, who is the largest organic farmer in the in the state. And um, he has full circle farms, he does farm stands, he sells the whole food. Rocky Mountain Pumpkin Ranch. This is Pumpkin Ranch. Um, so we just renewed the lease with him, so he will be continuing to farm that property up until we decide to do a community park at that point. There are still 46, 48 acres, I think, in the southern portion of that, that have to stay in either ag or natural areas. They cannot part the park. So he has said that he would like to continue farming that even after the park goes in. And he's looking at doing a center pivot down on that property for water conservation as well. So, and we're taking up his lease renewal to city council tomorrow. Tomorrow. Night. Okay. There's some that. <laughs> I can pass it around if you want, but I just it, I just wanted to mention, you know, agricultural lease management and renewals are something that the Open Space Program does, and this is one that we're taking to council tomorrow night. We'll see how we can what, what's the timeline for a statewide or a regional park, or whatever you just called it? I mean, is that five years, 15 years? You know, if you look at what we have, like in the eight and five, we have you know eight parks in the next five years. Our CAP plans are basically for you know five years. So it's not on the five-year plan. So then we'd be going to, you have sisters out there. You have there's right. a lot of stuff out there still. So you know those are things I do think getting input from community is important. But Stephanie is really starting to look at, you know, as things get completed, where does the next project, as a project manager go, and how does that work? Other pieces that we have, two of those positions are termed at about five years, so we there may be some slowing back and slowing down at that point as well. So not within the next five years. Not within five. Years. It's not on any right. five year CIP. Okay. That was one of the sites we placed for work. Yes. Right. Yeah. But within the next five years, we are trying to work with a lot of our agricultural plans on the infrastructure and to support them. Um, doing center pivots and things, so those are the types of projects that. Oh, instead of the ditch stuff. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Okay. Any other items from staff before we move? 
I mm -hmm. want response to the e bike thing. Mm -hmm. I wasn't here last week and it was brought up, but um, in my other work with the county, we had a really good study session several years ago to just kind of like introduce a lot of different perspectives on e bikes from transportation and mobility. And it was really helpful to have like a chance to talk about it without some kind of decision being proposed. So if we could have a chance to do that, it would be a recommendation. And I think your transport, you brought up last meeting that our new council member was on transportation. I think it's a conversation they probably had more conversations about it than we have. So I think making sure that the city's um, alignment on this is something we're up trying to meet all those overarching goals. So I think there's definitely a lot of time yeah. to have some of those big conversations. I think part of that for the county was that the municipalities all had their own rules at that time. So it's really confusing to know what could be done with the trails that cross county and municipal boundaries. So it'd be good to note, I guess, just how that's evolved outside of the city to know where we might end up kind of yeah. wanting this. Kind of so just so you know, one of my previous positions, I was the lead ranger for Boulder County. It was one of the pieces for me that you want to set people up for success. So if they leave on their e-bike with their dog on a leash and they start hitting different property ownerships and the dog is allowed and the bike is not, the dog. And, the, exactly, <laughs> and the dog is allowed. So, so yes, yeah, so all those pieces, you know, equestrians, all those pieces, I think that, you know, sometimes we start having these regional trails, how do you make it so successful for the user? So I think you definitely want to talk about it. That's great. <laughs> Any items from the board? Okay. So Ben, two Saturdays in a row, Centennial Pool didn't open on time. You did you hear about this? Um, the Saturday after Thanksgiving, there was some kind of chlorine yeah. alarm. Yeah. So they wouldn't. It didn't open. And the next Saturday, something else. I didn't go that day. It was too different. In any case, you need to document this. Centennial Pool is dying. Or how it, well. We are the, documenting. Okay, I mean, we need to. Publicly. Yes, we, we discussed this, the failure of it. I mean, I think a lot of the swimmers are like, yeah, the, the pool, they'll just keep fixing the pool. You need to somehow get that word out, would be my thought. Okay. As a, I mean, this is the stick end of carrot and stick, you know, hey, we're not going to have a pool soon because ABC, it's going to cost us this many bazillion dollars to fix it or redo it. Or it, These are just two examples, but it reminded all of us at the pool, the master swimmers in particular, it's like, oh, this pool is old because here we are at 7 a.m. on a Saturday and we don't get to swim after all, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So it's just it was just a simple reminder. So, you know, for four years from now, and we try this again or whatever it is, you know. Yeah, we, we do. We do have <laughs> Sarah on a, on a log. Okay, well, we somehow we need to publish this. You know, we've spent X amount of man hours and money, you know, just keeping this thing running and, you know, that kind of stuff. I don't know. To, you know, to you brought this up. It's like, hey, we're, we're just not, people don't believe that it's falling apart. Right. Yeah. And that's very true. People don't believe it. They're the user there. Yeah, well, and that's what Jeff has been saying that for years. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> I'm trying to be helpful. I'm on board. Yeah, I'm on board. great. <laughs> and thanks. I've had a fun time in this group. And uh, it's a very different set of people in good ways. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, people cycle through. It's kind of cool. I don't know if I'll try again next year or not. We'll see what happens. What's <laughs> Oh gosh, I can't think of his name. He did two spans. Oh yeah, he was here when I started. Right. Oh shoot. That's embarrassing. Yeah. He was when really I good at wordsmithing. Him, he was super good. Right? Yes, wordsmithing particularly. Steve would remember. Doug. Yes. Oh yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so we'll I see. yeah, I have one item that before we jump out, and I have been talking with. Sarah on Ben's staff just about the ICE pavilion and the ICE programming. Um, I think since we don't, don't have any sort of new ICE facilities in the near future, I'd love to see the city really think about how to shore up that program and you know expand the programming. The programming has kind of decreased over the years. Mm -hmm. So there used to be well, um, drop in skating and I like. I will gently disagree with that. Well, there, I'll <laughs> finish and then. I mean, <laughs> there used to be drop in for um, adult, youth, and teen. And then now there's just adult and youth, and the teens are left out. And so I've been talking with her about like, can we create some flexibility so it's more open? There's also no stick and puck. There's just 
drop-in hockey, which is usually a scrimmage, so there's no time for people to actually practice skills. And I've been a lot of, um, like the Zambonis have a lot of problems. <laughs> so I just think it's a real, it's a real <laughs> treasure of a program, and it's unfortunate that we don't have an opportunity again to provide, you know, indoor rink. But I'd really like to see the city think about how they can continue to invest in that and ensure that there's as much opportunity there for the community as possible. And Sarah has been super responsive, and I know they're trying to be flexible, but I think there's a few small changes would be really helpful in terms of the programming. Yeah, I will, I will <clears throat> disagree that stuff is decreased. We are maximizing the entire length of time that we can for that facility. That, that hasn't. And programming changes. It changes over the year. That's the nature of our business. So we're loving to hear different perspectives and different perspectives. And we will continue to look at opportunities to make those tweaks and make those changes. But it's it's a facility we, we do maximize. We want to maximize as much as possible. And like all of our facilities, it's how do we serve as many people as possible with the limited amount of resources we have. And it doesn't fit everybody every time. But we try to fit as many as we possibly can in that. And so we'll keep making adjustments, keep making looking at changes. So I mean, I've, I've talked to Sarah and she's like, yeah, I think you know, looking at opportunities based on some of your input. So we really do appreciate that. And yeah, it's another one a lot like Centennial that the Zamboni is a limited lifespan. Um, the, what was it, the day the day before Thanksgiving, a what I'll call steering strap broke. <laughs> and so we were searching, the staff did an amazing job tracking, physically tracking down the guy we go to who happened to be at his shop, even though they weren't open, and found him. He came out Thanksgiving morning, got it welded so that, it could be, so that we could be open mm -hmm. the next day. And we had a plan to be, to do it by hand, um, half open, half closed. But yeah, the, the the facility is, you know, it's aging. The Zamboni, the chiller, which I know you guys know well. <laughs> I mean, it, it's a million dollars right there. And that's another plan we've got to come up with now. Is something, what do we do with that going forward? Are we going to invest in it for what it is? is it's, it's unique. Is there a chance for the Y proposal to come back in any form by itself? I don't really have that answer. It sounded like there was when Jeff talked about it to me. The, the Hawaiians asked, um, what it would take to do a special election? So I'm assuming that, that is part of their question. Is that possible to have an election? A special election? I'm sure, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a, a cost. It's, it's a cost. So you have to put the cost in the city. You have to, yeah. They, they think strongly people that have voted for their thing by itself, which is they're helping to fund a, a bit of a study um, to survey um, voters. I don't think that's true. I think people patently voted everything down. So I don't think that was going to be the thing, but I think they need to see the numbers here from people and, and figure it out. So the YMCA, they're not going away necessarily. I thought that they were like, we get one chance at this to be long run, and otherwise we're leaving. I've never heard that. No, no, no. They're, they are still interested. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, just think about the, you know, facing these persistent problems with Centennial and the Ice Pavilion, and it's like... There, there's lack of opportunity of other facilities that they own to do the same thing, and I think there's, um, let's say, ambitious people who want to um, accelerate their career and why that this helps as well as helps the community as a whole. So <coughs> and their facility has the same problem as Centennial. Oh, and their facility yeah. has other problems, yeah. So it's, it's uh, there's there's some things that go on there of you know, setting up for success. So it's interesting. <laughs> Any other items from the board? Um, I know some mowing, um, a lot of mowing on the trail, along the trail, and that's, I, I get it because we haven't had a fire, you know, it's a fire ecology and you can't have fire along the trail, um, uh, along left hand. Um, 
And um, I'm assuming that a lot of it was due to thoughts about people living in that grass. Though a lot of it, it was just a really large swath that now kind of looks parky and um, it's not a habitat anymore. There's a lot of uh, a lot of small animal habitat in there, and there's a definite decrease in small animal habitat in there. And so, if what's done is done, it was just kind of late season to have that mowing to have have things not be able to like regrow a little bit or anything like that. Um, weirdly, it was like not where people actually stay got mowed. <laughs> Um, like everything but where people stay, but you wouldn't even be able to, that, that's a difficult place to mow along that. But it's just this really long stretch. And in the future, I was hoping if we, like when we do mowing, that it's uh, a little more spotty instead of mowing for a mile and then like a ton of mowing, that it's, you know, mowing, you know, 15 yards of mowing and then grass is left kind of, and then maybe another 15 yards. I know it's hard with contractors and things like that, but it would be good just to leave some habitat out there in a, in a very, uh, very species rich area that's really habitat stressed with the, um, the mining that's going on, the gravel mining is a real have stress on the habitat um, there, and then, you know, Costco and all that, so, yeah. That's a partnership we, that's managed, we have a, a, an obligation to deliver water, so left hand actually like everything else in our city carries water for water rights, so we, we have an obligation to keep these clean and moving for that. We have to have access for that. We have public safety needs as far as people camping down there and having fires. We have environmental issues, so we have a very collaborative team that's going out there saying what can we do to, one group would like to keep all the habitat and do nothing, one would like to say, if you mow it all down, we can drive by and see what's happening there and be okay. And others like, if we slick it all down, water can bathe really easily. So the, what you're seeing is really a result of a very deliberative conversation on different groups working on how you address multiple city challenges in, in a place that um, doesn't have one really good solution. So I'll carry that forward, but what you're saying is, is really what we're doing. We're sitting down there with multiple groups and saying, what do we need to do to achieve these different objectives? And maybe the new ranger, instead of being a drive-by ranger, can be a mounted <laughs> ranger with a little bit of a slower going, like me, because I'm a pretty flippin' slow runner anymore. Um, Our yeah. ranchers are down there all the yeah. time. They're talking to the people. Yeah. It really is that constant vigilance. So, you know, we have police officers have other things to do for them to be able to drive by and see things and get down there. It's a, it's a partnership okay. with those two, but the rangers are... are down in there trying to figure out where the best places are to contact people, give them service they need, or try to get them to move out. And again, just talk about habitat. Um, having humans and human feces and human waste and litter and trash and garbage and fires is really not great habitat. Oh, either. no, it's not. I, I get it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm in it. Right. You know, I, I get that. It's not great either, but just uh, there's certain areas that weren't human habitat and or no, but they're, they're mown now. And I think it was just because it was easier to do that, and um, it just, you know, just leaving out that, that we don't need to. Anything else? I have another question about habitat, but I'll ask it again. <laughs> Are there no other items? I moved to adjourn. Yeah, I was just going to say. <laughs> I'll second. All those in favor? <laughs> <laughs>